Hello everyone, it's Margarita from DrRegisterNurse.com. Today we are going to review a couple of questions and we are going to incorporate some of the test taking strategies that we have shown you. And if you have not seen those videos, make sure you go under the Dr. Register Nurse playlist. They are all there. Now let's get ready to review some questions. So this is our first NCLEX question. NCLEX question number one. A nurse is obtaining informed consent for a patient who is having a liver biopsy. Which of the following are appropriate nursing actions? And this is a select all that apply question. If you've seen my test taking strategies videos, you know that I always tell you to read the question twice and to take between 20 to 30 seconds to think about what the question is asking you. Do not look at the responses. That is why they're not here. They will be here in a couple of seconds. So I want to make sure that you have a blank slate and that you get all that knowledge you know about informed consent and think about what is it about informed consent that a nurse or a nursing student has to think about. So let's reread this question. A nurse is obtaining informed consent for a patient who is having a liver biopsy. Which of the following are appropriate nursing actions? So what do I know about informed consent? I know that this is a consent form that the patient is going to sign or if the patient has a power of attorney and that is a person that the patient has assigned to make decisions for the patient that allows the patient to agree to a procedure, um, a, an intervention that's going to be done and the patient has to be fully aware of all the risks and benefits that come with this procedure or surgical intervention and as a nurse I have to make sure that my patient understands what are those risks and benefits and if they have any questions to make sure they ask them I'm gonna be witnessing this consent so my signature is gonna go on the consent so when you have your signature on paper this is a legal document so you want to make sure that the patient is fully aware of what's going on at all times and that means that when you do your neuro assessment when you're going in there and uh, doing your nursing assessment and part of that is checking if the patient is alert and oriented time street to self place and time you want to make sure that the patient is mentally sound mentally capable of understanding what that physician is explaining to them because they are going to have in this case a liver biopsy so now that I've thought about all that and that took about 20 I think I took like 25 seconds let me show you the answers so we have A through E, and remember this is select all that applies. There's gonna be more than one response. So let's look at the choices. The first one, explain to the patient why they are having the procedure. Ensure the patient has understood the information about the procedure. Inform the patient of the risks and benefits of the procedure. Witness the patient signing the informed consent. Determine if the patient is mentally capable of understanding why they are having the procedure. So now, remember, we just went over everything that we know about informed consent. So automatically, you can start eliminating answers. So what is the first one you will eliminate? Let's go through them. Would we as a nurse or a nursing student explain to the patient why they are having the procedure? No, we do not. That is the responsibility of the physician. Would we ensure the patient has understood the information about the procedure? Hmm, that is something that we as nurses do, so we will keep that answer. C, inform the patient of the risks and benefits of the procedure. Hmm, would we as nurses inform the patient of the risks and benefits as to why they are having a liver biopsy? No, that is the responsibility of the physician. D, witness the patient signing the informed consent. Yes, when we witness an informed consent, it means that the patient has fully understood the information that they received about the procedure and have also received information about the risks and benefits of the liver biopsy. E, determine if the patient is mentally capable of understanding why they are having the procedure. 
Yes, that is a nurse's responsibility. When we do our neuroassessment and we make sure that our patient is alert and oriented times three, we are determining if the patient is mentally capable. However, there are some patients that might be nonverbal or might, that might have assigned a power of attorney for whatever the reason is. So you have to make sure that if that is in place, that you have the power of attorney either present or over the phone where their consent can be witnessed. So from all these choices, the ones that we are going to pick are B, ensure that the patient has understood the information about the procedure. D, witness the patient signing the informed consent. And E, determine if the patient is mentally capable of understanding why they are having the procedure. And we would eliminate the ones that pertain to the physician's responsibilities, which is to ensure that the patient has understood the information about the procedure, as well as the risks and benefits of the procedure. Next question. A nurse is caring for a patient who complains of nausea and vomiting two days post-operative after a cholecystectomy. Which of the following actions should the nurse do first? So following our test taking strategies, let's read that question again. A nurse is caring for a patient who complains of nausea and vomiting two days post-operatively. So this is two days after the surgery. They had a cholecystectomy. Which of the following actions should the nurse do first? Hmm, so what is the question asking me? The question is asking me a priority question. The patient is complaining of nausea and vomiting. This is also a time frame question. So let's think about that. What can happen to a patient that had surgical procedure? They can have complications. So what are those complications? Well, if we go to the ones that, uh, that result in a negative patient outcome, they can have infections, um, when they had a cholecystectomy, which means that they've had their gallbladder bladder removed, they might have nipped something around that area, which is in the right upper quadrant. They might develop an ileus which, or an obstruction, uh, which might cause nausea and vomiting. That is one of the things that causes nausea and vomiting. And it can happen being that in surgeries, they give anesthesia and anesthesia slows down gastric motility, so things are slow. They can, um, it might be a while before they actually start having hyperactive bowel sounds. It, it's normal to have hypoactive bowel sounds after a surgical procedure due to the anesthesia, slowing everything down. So let's see what are our choices. We have choices A through D. So the first one is Administer the ordered antiemetic medication. That is a medication that's given for nausea and vomiting. B, restart prescribed IV fluids. C, assess bowel sounds. D, insert a prescribed NG tube to decompress the stomach. Hmm. Based on our test taking strategies videos here in Dr. Registered Nurse, I've always said that if there are components of an assessment missing, the answer will always be an assessment response. If you have all of the assessment components in your question, the answer will always be an intervention. Also, use the other strategies. What strikes you different in these answers? Hmm. Let's say you didn't know the answer at all. Let's look at A, administer the ordered antiemetic medication. Hmm, that's an intervention. B, restart prescribed IV fluids. Restarting it is an intervention. C, assess bowel sounds. Hmm, that's an assessment response. D, insert a prescribed NG tube. That is also an intervention. So we have three interventions here and one assessment. If I were to use a test taking strategy, if I did not know anything about anything that's going on in this question, my best bet is to use the one that is called odd man wins, which means there are three interventions here and one assessment. And I would probably pick C. That is if I didn't know anything. And I will try to make an informed decision. And I would say, hmm, 
I think I might pick C because I don't know anything about a cholecystectomy or two days postoperatively or the patient complaining about something. So I'm just, you know, my mind is blank. I'm just going to pick that. That's a good choice because guess what? That is the answer. Because remember, if you don't have all of your assessment components, you cannot just immediately go and administer the ordered antiemetic. You have to go and assess the patient. The patient is complaining of nausea and vomiting. Yes, if there is medication available, ultimately you are able to give it to them, but you have to go and assess the patient. What? You're gonna to listen to bowel sounds because postoperatively we talked about that everything is slowed down, so they will be hypoactive. But if a patient is complaining of nausea and vomiting two days postoperatively, you wanna go and assess the patient. And part of that assessment, that GI assessment, is listening to those bowel sounds. So you cannot automatically jump and do an intervention like administer the antiemetic medication. You first have to assess bowel sounds. You already know that she has complained, the patient has complained of nausea and vomiting two days postoperatively, but the next part is also listening to those bowel sounds. So let's say I already listened to the bowel sounds. Well, now I have some information for me to do an action. So at that point, I would probably administer the order anti-emetic medication. Why would I jump to insert a prescribed NG tube to decompress the stomach? First, I want to go to the least invasive first, if that is the next action. But for this question, the response is an assessment response, which is to assess the bowel sounds and, deter and determine if my next action will be to administer the ordered antiemetic or not. So always remember, if you do not have all of your assessment components in your question, the answer will always be an assessment answer. If you have all of your assessment components in the question, your answer will be an intervention. Well, I hope that these two questions were super helpful to you. We're going to do two more questions next week. Uh, the plan is to do two questions a week. Please put your questions down below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video and share with your friends and give me some feedback. Let me know what other questions you want to see. I'm always going to include at least one select all the apply and another question. Just make sure you go back to our video list, our playlist at Dr. Register Nurse and look through those test taking strategies videos because I'm always going to incorporate those strategies in these questions. Well, I wish you a great rest of your day. Bye.